Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus, drydocks.com. And today is going to give you a little bit of an overview of a really cool model with a really cool history. It's a 172nd scale Russian Kilo RC submarine. Let's get into it. So this particular model is a little bit different than the ones that you may have seen me featuring before in that this hull was actually completely scratch built by a very talented modeler by the name of William Rogers. So he completely built this model from scratch and I'm going to show you some of the really great work that he did on building out the boat, a lot of the great details that he put together in here. And then we're gonna get into the functionality of it and how I finished it out for full RC operation. So, let's take a closer look. All right, let's take a look at everything that goes into an RC submarine package to start with. Obviously, we have got the hull itself, obviously the most well-known part of the RC submarine package. And then as or equally or, or more important is the subdriver, the watertight cylinder that houses all of the important, uh, very expensive bits and pieces of an RC submarine. Let's take a quick look at this before we move on. Now, this is uh, a Nautilus dry docks, three inch subdriver. Uh, has three compartments. There's the uh, rear section here right now that houses the motor, speed controller, the automatic pitch controller, servos, the receiver, and the ballast servo. Then we move into the ballast tank itself, and you can see that it has a safety float valve in here for the snort system and all the linkages for the ballast system. And then in the forward compartment, we have got the battery compartment. And uh, strapped to the top, you can see the remote on-off switch and the bow plane servo mounted to the forward bulkhead there. So this is, uh, as I said, the expensive and extremely important part of any RC submarine. Uh, we've got the remote key fob. This is how you turn the model on and off. And then everything is controlled from this six channel VEX Robotics transmitter. Let's take a closer look at the exterior of this scratch built RC submarine model uh, of this 72nd Russian Kilo. We'll start at the back here. We've got a beautiful little uh, brass seven bladed scimitar uh, propeller. Uh, rear dive planes which move exceptionally easily. I had to do a little bit of tweaking in there to uh, eliminate some binding and get things moving well uh, but now it's working really well and same goes for the rudder. Up on the, uh, the top of the deck you can see all this really great scribing that he did and uh, it really does set out the the boat there. You know you could probably add some grating behind these you know, uh, vents in the side of the hull to give it some more interest. But uh, as it is right now, it's beautiful. One of the neat things that uh, he actually ended up doing is created some functional periscopes. And by functional, I mean, um, these actually are, are free moving and they raise and lower via a float inside the sail there. So as the model submerges, these little periscopes uh, lift up. So that's a really cool feature. Um, when I got it, these forward dive planes were non-functional. They were just static. Um, certainly an RC submarine can function quite well utilizing only the stern planes, but for better control and more realistic operation, you want these to be functional. So I went ahead and, uh, and made these fully functional, created all of the linkages that mate up to the watertight cylinder. So again, just some really neat scribing in the boat there in this sonar dome uh, up in the front of the kilo. Um, one thing to note about the kilo, which is kind of interesting, is that it doesn't have the typical upper rudder that many other 
um, contemporary submarines have. It only has a lower rudder, um, but it is very sizable and actually, in my experience, provides uh, a really good turning performance for the boat. So that's just something that's, uh, that's really interesting as a design characteristic of the Kilo. So if we take a look uh, at this boat here, um, hiding underneath, and I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there's a little screw hole right here and a, uh, a stainless steel bolt secures the upper hull to the lower hull uh, in here. And it's just a, a standard Phillips head uh, screw or bolt that keeps it mated together. Um, I'm gonna take that off. You just basically lift up on the forward part of the hull. We're just gonna set it aside over here. So here is the, uh, the inner workings of the model. I've got a different video that actually shows a little bit about trimming that I just uploaded if you're interested. And it goes into a little bit more about the uh, insertion of ballast weights uh, and trim foam in here. But you can see this is closed style styrofoam that's been mounted inside the hull of the boat. Uh, the rule of thumb, by the way, for trimming out an RC submarine is to mount your ballast always as low as possible in the hull and the flotation foam as high as possible. Uh, again, I've got many videos that go into that and you can see these strips of foam that uh, are in the upper hull for flotation. Uh, these are self-adhesive ballast weights. Um, placed to uh, give maximum stability for the boat. We've got an intermediate drive shaft in here uh, with some nylon dog bones and basically these pop right into that little adapter there and that allows the propeller shaft to spin. And then we've got our uh, linkages. Like I said, it's always exceptionally important that these are as free moving as possible with no binding and full range of motion. So if you're setting up linkages in your RC submarine, take the time to make sure that that is the case. Let's take a look uh, inside the upper hull here because there's some, uh, some important things. Now, this was actually a beautiful boat to trim out. It was not uh, a terrible process at all. Um, and as such, you don't see a lot of extraneous little bits and pieces of foam jammed into uh, the upper hull of the boat. Uh, the nose is basically completely open and empty. Suppose anybody who was interested could um, put in a, a set of 70 second scale torpedoes if they were so inclined. Uh, we can see the linkages for the forward dive planes uh, and again very free moving uh, and it is connected via this magnetic connector which mates to the magnetic connector in the front of the cylinder. The other important thing to note in here and this is vitally important this is the snorkel for the, uh, the intake for the ballast system and that's a float valve that actually sits all the way up, it's a vertical float, in the sail of the boat. So basically as the submarine submerges, that float valve closes so that the ballast system doesn't pull air in, or actually water in, uh, as it's submerged. And then as the sail emerges, that valve opens and air is allowed to be sucked into the ballast system. But I'll get into the operation of the ballast system here momentarily. Installation of the watertight cylinder is very, very easy. Basically all you uh, do is grab your intermediate shaft here, set it in place in the back, match it up to the cylinder, and then as you drop this down, there is a little pin in the bottom of the, of the hull that matches a hole in the ballast tank, and you drop it down. Basically, it is set in place. That's exactly where it goes. We've got some magnetic connectors in the back that just click into place. Now it is in its correct position. Take these elastics, stretch them over, on both sides 
And you know, uh, historically, I always thought these bands were kind of a, a cheesy idea, but man, oh man, are they convenient and boy, do they ever work well. I, I may be, uh, you know, a, a conversion to this as a hold down for uh, watertight cylinders. Certainly viable and very easy to do for anybody looking to hold the cylinder down securely in their remote controlled submarine model. Um, after that is done, basically you take this uh, snorkel intake and connect it to the snorkel itself. And this is a quick connect, just presses together, a little twist, clicks, and that's it. Basically, everything is connected, ready to go. Now that the cylinder is put in place, this is the receiver antenna, and that's run through this uh, tube with a cap in the end. And I do that on my builds so that you can actually submerge the cylinder in a test tank, pop the cap off, blow into the tube to check for leaks. So not only does it allow you to stretch your antenna out the full length of the boat, but it also gives you this test tube to allow you to check for leaks later on. So all we're gonna do is just run that underneath these bands so that everything is nice and tidy, tucked out of the way, and we're ready to put our upper hull in place. All right, I'm gonna show you some of the operation with the upper hull off so you can see everything moving in there. I'm gonna extend the antenna of our radio. We're gonna turn it on. For an RC submarine or any RC equipment for that matter, transmitter always gets turned on first. We're just gonna set this back here. And we're gonna take our uh, key fob and everything is set to go. So as a bit of a note, Typically, what you'll end up seeing in an RC submarine uh, is the owner having to actually go into the battery compartment, make up the connection between the battery and the rest of the cylinder, and then put the end cap on and put everything in place. Alternatively, what some people do is they mount a waterproof switch in the forward bulkhead, and that allows you to turn it on and off uh, from outside, but again, you've got to turn it on and then put the top of your submarine on um, So it's not quite as convenient and what I've come up with is this remote controlled on off So all you need to do is hit on You can see the power has cycled on and it's all ready to go So as you can see what you can do is set your boat up on the bench Turn it off put it in your vehicle drive to the pond and just turn it on and put it in the water. So it's a great alternative to those waterproof uh, switches that I mentioned earlier. So let's just run through some of the, the functions here. We'll start uh, on the left hand stick. We've got our um, throttle. And it moves uh, exceptionally smoothly. Now you can see the uh, these dive planes kind of shaking a little bit. And the reason that's happening is because the uh, electronic pitch controller is in there. It's mounted to the equipment tray and it's just picking up the vibrations and it's nice and sensitive. So it actually uh, shakes a little bit. That goes away, by the way, when that model's put in the water. Um, we've got our uh, rudder left and right here. You can see that moving. We got really good deflection. We've got our uh, forward dive planes. So that's mounted to the forward bulkhead there. And we've got our rear dive planes um, override. And those are basically autonomous. And as you can see, as I move the model, those dive planes automatically attempt to correct the pitch of the boat. And that stops a really embarrassing porpoising of the model as you try and maintain a nice even keel. So the other thing that we've got in here is the ballast control. And uh, basically when you hit uh, down on the back button of the controller here, that vents the ballast tank all the air escapes. It fills with water from the bottom of the tank. 
You close it and you're maintaining that level of buoyancy. To surface, you hit the up button and what it does, and you'll hear this here in a moment, what that does is it kicks on an air pump. Now, this is the, the secret to the ballast system. I'm just gonna disconnect this right now to better illustrate what I'm talking about. So there's two stages of operation of the ballast system in this particular boat. The first one is when it is submerged. So the snorkel valve is closed. We're gonna tend, pretend my finger is that snorkel valve. When that happens, the air pump kicks in it can't pull air from the surface, and so it actually begins pulling air from the inside of the dry compartments of the cylinder. And it blows that air into the ballast tank, displacing the water, the model becomes positively buoyant and begins to rise. As that snorkel valve emerges from the water, that valve opens, and air is then drawn through this hose equalizes the pressure throughout the entire cylinder and the air is drawn from the surface and continues to finish to blow out the ballast tank. So this is called an SAS or semi-aspirated ballast system uh, envisioned by David Merriman who is the creator of these subdriver watertight cylinders for me. So that's the SAS ballast system that serves as the core functionality for the ability of the model to statically dive. So to put the, uh, the upper hull onto the lower hull, we can connect this um, air intake for the, for the snorkel. And you're gonna set that out of the way so that it doesn't get pinched or interfere with the hull. We slip the back in first. Just give it a little squeeze to make sure that these tabs go into place and as you lower it, these big magnets that uh, were put all along the bottom edge there will snap that hull right down into place. So it actually holds that uh, down really, really well, helps to maintain alignment um, with the hull. And then you just take your stainless bolt, insert it from the bottom, tighten it down, and everything is completely ready to go. Uh, everything is still on. So you can see my front dive planes in operation there. Got some nice deflection, so uh, some really good performance out of those dive planes there. Well, there you go, a bit of an overview of this really cool scratch-built model of a 172nd scale Russian Kilo submarine. Uh, the only thing that I would probably add to this boat would be the, uh, the BLM, the Battery Link Monitor Failsafe Unit. Um, not currently installed in this boat, but it's always a good idea. And what that basically does is it monitors the uh, signal from the transmitter. And if that goes away for whatever reason, it'll automatically blow ballast. Uh, likewise, if the battery voltage gets too low in the unit, it'll automatically blow ballast as well. All that said, you're probably very interested in knowing how this model performs and seeing some video of it. Well, I managed to take a little bit. Um, I got this in my pool in the backyard during her maiden voyage, and boy, it is an absolutely beautiful model to drive. It is very, very sedate, um, and it's very fast as well. I typically operated it at uh, between one-third and one-half throttle, and that was plenty of speed for a nice and stately progression on and under the water. So let's take a look at some of that uh, footage there. I'll show you what I was talking about.
this wraps up this overview video of this beautiful little 70 second scale kilo. Again, originally mastered by William Rogers. Thanks, Will, for the opportunity to get this model wet for the new owner. My name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com. I really hope you subscribe. I put out new videos as often as I can with hints, tricks, kit reviews, and much, much more. Visit my website, NautilusDrydocks.com for all sorts of cool stuff. Thanks for joining me, everyone. We will catch you next time.